Few human creations represent the peak of globalization as well as the sovereign wealth fund. The world's 90-odd sovereign wealth funds have gained significant clout over the past two decades. Together, they oversee more than $8 trillion in assets, equivalent to around 10% of the global gross domestic product. But exactly what is a sovereign wealth fund? Let's break it down. Sovereignty is the power of a nation to self-govern. Nations utilize this power by making and applying laws, imposing taxes, engaging in war, and participating in trade. As a result, just as Adam Smith predicted, sovereign nations can and do gain wealth. So, a sovereign wealth fund is a pool of money owned and used by a national government for its own investment purposes. Governments invest this money in companies and real estate all over the world to benefit their country's economy and citizens. So where exactly does this money come from in the first place? Well, the nation accumulates money in its central bank reserves from budget and trade surpluses or other sources of revenue. Most efficiently managed governments do not have big surpluses of money in their reserves unless they have abundant income. For example, Many of the oil-rich countries, such as Norway, Russia, and countries in the Middle East, have created sovereign wealth funds to invest the money coming into their countries from oil. The first country in the world to start a sovereign wealth fund was Kuwait. Right after Kuwait discovered oil, it decided to establish a fund in 1953 to invest its excess oil revenues. It soon became one of the wealthiest nations in the world. In 1990, the tiny Persian Gulf country was invaded and occupied by Iraq, and then freed by 35 nations led by the United States. And yes, this war really was about oil and the wealthy funds that come with it. With a population of only 4.1 million, Kuwait remains sovereign today and its sovereign wealth fund is estimated to be one of the largest funds in the world sitting at over $500 billion. East Asian countries like China, Hong Kong, and Singapore are also known for having sovereign wealth funds. Unlike their oil-wielding counterparts, these countries got their excess reserves from the Asian export boom. As they began exporting more than they imported, the East Asian countries had a lot of money lying around. So, they set up their sovereign wealth funds to send their excess funds to financial markets around the world and make more and more funds. However, just as sovereign wealth funds represent the peak of globalization and a great way for a nation to diversify its wealth, they may represent the low point of globalization as well in a post-COVID world. As global trade is clearly facing steep hurdles and a tense political climate, sovereign wealth funds may be seen more as the minions of nations out to do their bidding as opposed to independent merchants just looking to make a buck. For example, the delicate relations between China and other countries might make foreign governments think twice before taking cash from one of China's sovereign wealth funds. Gary Smith, Managing Director at Sovereign Focus, a sovereign wealth fund advisement firm, puts it this way. In the current climate, it is unlikely that a state-owned investment vehicle, aka a sovereign wealth fund, will be able to achieve a better overall assessment than that of the sovereign nation that owns it. In other words, if my country has conflict with your country, then my financial market has conflict with your country's sovereign wealth fund. While the fate and fortune of sovereign wealth funds remains uncertain, their success as an important global investment vehicle remains undisputed. Collectively, they are twice the size of all hedge funds combined, have power to move the overall market, and impact global economic and political policy the world around. Thanks, Adam Smith.